folks, I'm not going to keep you waiting. Uh, the main guy is here. This is Coach McKay. Coach, uh, how you doing here? Is that a big, uh, uh, busy couple days here uh, right before the holidays? How you doing tonight? Doing great, Nick. Let me let me just say this. Do I have to address Will as Dr. Will or Reverend <laughs> Will? I prefer neither. Uh, yeah. Just Will's fine. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with I'm I'm gonna go with Doctor Will because uh, that uh, that takes some some work to achieve that status. And then Nick, man, you're like the Brian Winhurst of uh, of Flames basketball, man. You, <laughs> you really uh, you do a great job, man. Uh, unbelievable the uh, at the degree you follow it with. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Sometimes I think you don't have enough to do, but uh, I'm really impressed with uh, with your knowledge of the game. He's the real doctor here. <laughs> my wife has other ideas of not having enough to do that's for sure uh, uh all right well coach uh two big wins to in the non-conference uh brian and grambling i know before the season you were hyping up this non-conference schedule now I'll, I'll be a little honest i was kind of like eh, i don't know about this but hey you were right this was a quality schedule these were two really good wins how do you how do you feel about your team and do you feel like this kind of gave you guys a little bit of momentum here as we get uh closer to conference play yeah, Nick, you know, I've said all along, it's uh, it's really hard to schedule these days for uh, mid-major programs, especially those that have experienced a little bit of success uh, or recent success. And, and it's simply because there's a narrative out there that uh, for the high majors that because they play so many conference games, there's no need to supplement their non-conference schedule with a uh, higher net ranking. So, in essence, they have been told schedule either quad ones or quad fours in the non-conference. Because if you lose to a quad two or three, it could be really detrimental to your NCAA tournament hope. So uh, that being said, you know, we we experienced a really difficult time trying to complete our schedule. So we kind of took what we could get. And, and on paper, I thought some of the teams that we were playing were going to be much improved. Uh, and I knew how good Alabama was. I, I didn't know they were top five in the country, but I knew they were good. And uh, consequently, man, we, we this is the best non-conference schedule that we've faced, uh, I want to say, since the 20 or since the yeah 2018-19 season, the year we went to the NCAA tournament and got to the round of 32. So you asked how I feel about our team. I feel good that we're, we're at nine and four now, and uh, I feel better that we've We've really played a schedule that has challenged ourselves. And uh, that being said, that's always what you want in preparation for what is the best ASUN that we've ever participated in. Yeah, Coach, I know you never know kind of what the non-conference schedule is going to look like or, or how good the teams are going to be. But when do you start? Like, what is the process? Like, when do you start actually looking at next season for non-conference opponents yeah well good question so by like right now we're trying to schedule for 23 24 and okay. uh it we have an mte and when you like the head in hawaii last year um this year's tournament in cancun we played in the space coast challenge we've gotten to a point where we've started to get invited to the the higher level tournaments the ones that are usually tied to a TV deal. And, uh, and next year we're in uh, Myrtle Beach. Uh, we'll, we'll play in uh, a tournament there. So uh, Breaking I think, news. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not sure I was supposed to announce that, but <laughs> sorry. Um, it, it, and we'll schedule around that. And uh, for, you know, for us, we're, we're trying to get high major games and uh, no one's scheduling right now. As a matter of fact, with the institution of the transfer portal, yeah. the, the, the slant has been to wait as long as you can to see what the other team's roster is going to look like. Had I had done that, um, I wouldn't have scheduled Southern Miss at the time we did. because uh, <laughs> They've got some great transfers who we got to see up close and personal. I think they're what 11 and one now or something like that. Uh, but I do think that really helps you prepare for a, a competitive league. Yeah. I certainly did not expect Southern Miss to be a quad one game at home. Uh <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty wild. Uh, Coach, I, I'm not sure how deep you get into the the A Sun, you know, when you're in non conference play, but I, I have to ask you about Florida Gulf Coast because they have had a, 
the whole conference as a whole has had a great non-conference, as you said. Uh, North Alabama with a win against Ole Miss yesterday. But what's your thoughts on on Florida Gulf Coast and kind of what uh, Pat Chambers is doing there? Have you ever run into to Pat Chambers before? Kind of a coach that I feel really maybe got undervalued when he was at Penn State. Yeah, he did a, he did a really good job at Penn State, Nick. And uh, I, I don't know him personally. I've uh, watched his teams. I've seen him on the road recruiting. Uh, he's very well respected. And they, they play with a, a great deal of of uh, freedom, but but it's with discipline. And, they, you know, they had, a, they had a really good team last year. Guys, they, uh, they, they were a tough out. And I know they lost Dunn Martin and uh, Kevin Samuel, but some of those other guys that weren't playing as much – uh, we're pretty good too. And then Thompson at the point for him, he's, he's really elevated, uh, uh, I think, or stabilized their backcourt. And I, that's a, that's a really good team, but so is Jacksonville. There's the usual suspects, Jacksonville, uh, Stetson, uh, it, North Florida is always like, I, I don't just throw out their non-conference schedule because whatever their record is, throw it out, pay no attention to it. Uh, he does a great job. Stetson's had a really good non-conference. And then we talk about Bellarmine last year. We, we all know how good Bellarmine is. Well, Queens, anytime you've been to the NCAA tournament six, seven, eight times in a row, you're used to winning. And there's a culture there that I, I just think this league is going to, I watched Lipscomb the other night against Louisville, man, they look great. And Kennesaw is a problem. No one's talking about them. Those dudes have started together three years in a row. So I, I see a – there won't be a night in the league where you can say, oh, well, we're supposed to beat them. That, that's going to happen. That will not happen this year. We, everybody's going to have to be on in order to win a Division One game once January or December 29th hits. Yeah. Well, I think the depth of the A-Sun, like you were saying, is a lot different this year. And – you know, I think maybe we should try to get Louisville on the schedule next year. They don't seem to uh, – I mean, I know we'll be – not be in the A-Sun anymore. But, you know, Coach, when I was in the – I don't – I think like the ninth grade, m- my mom asked me one day why she had not signed a progress report in two years. And I told her that they just don't give those out anymore, which was a lie. I was just signing her name to it. But yeah, <laughs> what – as you guys are going into – um, conference play like what is coach McKay's progress report for the team not as not as much as you know who you're playing but just how you're playing as a unit well thanks for the uh the little history before the question yeah. I appreciate that <laughs> and uh, as as a reverend you know confession is good for the soul but back to the reputation <laughs> shouldn't be signing your mom's name well uh yeah it, you know I'll start with our freshmen uh, Colin Porter and Zach Cleveland if you haven't seen us a bunch uh you're going to come to love their games. Those dudes are really, really good players, and and they're even better people. Uh, Nick, you asked early on how I feel about our group. I, I'm telling you, there's not – there can't be a better locker room than the one that we get a chance to experience. I love our dudes and and our coaches and support staff. It, I think it's it's got a, a really unique atmosphere to it. Uh, so I, I think we're getting better. Uh, let's see, we lost to Northwestern, played poorly in the second half, got back Thanksgiving Day, and in the preceding, what, 28 days or four weeks, I, I think we've improved. I think there's there's a more attentive uh, disposition about the details of our program, taking care of the basketball, trying to trying to get a good shot, and being a little harder to play against defensively. So – that encourages me. Uh, I still think, again, we have a, a, a lot of room for improvement. Uh, but I will say this, and I think I alluded to it on the radio, the post game show. Like they, you take out a segment of the Oral Roberts game and maybe the Northwestern game, and well, if we wouldn't have spotted Southern Miss, who deserved it, twenty six points. Like we, there could be a whole different story to where we are in our season. So I haven't thought that we were far away from. Uh, being a, a really good team, I still don't think we're the best version of ourselves, but I, I do think I do think we are approaching that. And I mentioned the freshman, the Darius McGee is Darius McGee. Please don't take Darius McGee for granted. It, it, it's it's it, it's uncanny the ability that he has to shot make. And uh, there's there's not a lot of players in the country 
uh, nor have worn a Liberty uniform that have the, the gift that he does there. And to do it with the humility he does, it's special. I'll, I'll land this plane. Sorry for the long answer, but today's game against the non-one, Darius came back in, and I put him back in because he only had like 10 points. I thought, man, the guy's averaging 20. I owe it to him to let him get a couple of buckets because he can do it in three possessions. The dude wouldn't shoot. He, he was more concerned about getting Bryson or Gabriel or Jonathan a shot. He wouldn't shoot. Like, that's who Darius McGee is. And uh, I think it's indicative of his experience at Liberty, what kind of university he represents, and, uh, and the overall – uh, reason he came back because of his teammates. I got one last question for you, Coach. I know you've been hounded on this in every post game press conference, uh, the, the turnovers, and I know I hounded you before the season started. Uh, but I did look this up. You guys are in the top 50 in uh, turnover rates since you came back from Cancun uh, nationally. Uh, do you feel like that is uh, kind of indicative of where you're at? And do you feel like that is, is, uh, Something you feel a lot more confident as you kind of get into a sun play? Yeah, yeah, I do think it's uh, it's something we're paying a lot of attention to, Nick. And uh, and again, there if it wasn't turning the basketball over, it would be something else. You know, whether free throw percentage or because again, it's the middle or towards the end of December, and we all know that there's still a lot to work on. So, uh, but but that's okay. That's honestly that's part of the process and. We want to embrace the hard. We want to, we want to keep getting better and uh, and try and just like we are in our spiritual pursuits, we're trying to find a, a better version of ourselves than yesterday. And I, again, I, I love our group's approach to it because I think it's really mature and it's uh, fun to be a part of. But I, when we take care of the ball, we usually get a good shot, Nick, and uh, and that's kind of the way we're built. So I hope we can. Thanks for looking that up, by the way. I hope we can keep trending in that direction. Elite shooting team, elite shooting. Just need to get the shots up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of elite shooters, um, coach, it's been really fun to watch Colin Porter play. Uh, my question is, do you get him and Brody Peebles confused? Because when I'm watching on TV and they're both running down the court, I, sometimes I don't know who is who. <laughs> now I, they are both elite shooters. I can tell you that, <laughs> and uh, and they they both work tremendously hard. Do you get them confused, Doctor Will, because of the headbands and the? It's long the headband hair? and the hair, and yeah. about yeah. you know about the same size, and you yeah. know, except for my ten-year-old looks older than Colin Porter <laughs> for some reason. Well, if your ten-year-old is as good as Colin Porter, we'll take him right now. <laughs> uh, now nah, those guys again, as much as they're in the gym, especially Brody, like I, I can't walk past the uh, the practice gym or in the arena without seeing Brody Peebles. I think he gets some mail there if I'm if I'm not <laughs> uh, but he that that kid keeps getting better and better and I think he's coming on yeah. next and uh, you'll want to talk to him a lot more than you'll want to talk to me. He's so he's so humble. Try and get a word or two out of Peebs though because he'll you know he he's he's unassuming. He, he doesn't think of himself more highly than he ought and uh, and I think that's what makes him so fun to root for, you know. This is hard, hard hitting press here, so we'll uh, we'll do our best. <laughs> All right, coach. Well, thanks so much. Best of luck as we get into uh, to A Sun play. We'll be uh, looking forward to it. Uh, getting started right away against Bellerman. Little revenge game, maybe. We'll see. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I'd call it a revenge game. <laughs> I, I know how hard they are to beat. I think they've lost once at home all year long, and uh, and they do a great job. We've seen enough of them. One question for you guys. Is your Christmas shopping finished? Uh, as good as well, I was going to ask you for advice on what I should get my wife of uh, 14 years, because at this point I have no idea anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's usually the thought that counts. But my wife's just in the uh, other room and she's an earshot away. So I can't give away <laughs> what this year's present is. Uh, but I've typically waited until the last day or two. Uh, I've only got one or two more gifts to pick up and I'll be done by tomorrow. You All can right. just say, I got to go talk to a recruit, right? And run to the store. And that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, thanks for having me on. And thanks for yep. how much you, uh, you follow Liberty basketball. I, I, it means a lot to us and uh, appreciate the way you cover us. So thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thanks thank coach. You, coach.